Hi guys, I'm Shikin. Welcome back to Mud Crab Weekly Show. Now we are in episode 4. If you haven't watched yet the previous episode, you can find the link at the description. In this episode, we will share with you about the boxes or crab house. First is the size of the boxes. Size of the boxes will determine your production mode, which means we can estimate the maximum size of crab that can be found in the vertical crab boxes. It is ideal for crab to be held in bigger space to mimic their natural environment. Confining my crab in small areas results in lower feeding rates, slower growth, and longer intermode periods. Nevertheless, utilizing bigger boxes will often require a larger floor area, which results in higher rental costs for farm operator. While some have attempted to stack the box higher to reduce the floor area requirement, they often have lower productivity due to the need to work at height. Therefore, it is crucial to understand the actual production method, whether soft shell, grow out or fattening that you are planning for and measuring track of between size rental and labor costs. The second consideration is the durability of the boxes. Certain species can be quite destructive during confinement, damaging your equipment, mainly the boxes, lids and piping. Boxes that are damaged would require maintenance or replacement in certain extreme cases. This adds on to the additional maintenance costs required to service the boxes. Apart from the damage caused by the crab, we would need to expect additional wear and tear from handling. Lids of the boxes need to be opened at least 2 to 3 times per day for feeding, monitoring and cleaning. Boxes and piping are occasionally disassembled for disinfection to ensure low bacterial count in the system. While plastic box typically have a lifespan of 8 to 10 years, it is important to factor in the additional wear and tears into the lifespan. Most importantly, it is to make sure your boxes have a lifespan exceeding the time needed to recoup your investment. Now, I will demo how we disassemble the crab boxes in our farm. We usually will disassemble the block during this inspection purposes. At the side of the box, it will have this part that help you to easily remove the boxes from the same row. At the bottom of the boxes, you can see a part to easily remove the boxes from the same column. This is also important during transportation. If you wish to ship your boxes from overseas, your boxes should be able to stand and not easily move due to the transportation activities. It also can secure the boxes from damages and leaking when arriving at your place. Besides, as the crab will produce waste from the feces and leftover food, this waste must be removed from the boxes to avoid contamination. Typical boxes using the stand of piping system usually requires human intervention to clean the box individually. Now, I will show you how we clean the waste. This amount to a high operating cost, especially locations with expensive labor. It is also important to mention 20 to 30% of the labor cost that can be associated to maintain the cleanliness of the box. Farm operators should evaluate the benefit of a higher productivity system as compared to a lower cost product. 
Also, you should consider whether the boxes secure the crab from escaping. Mud crab are essentially a nocturnal species and they are most active during the night. In traditional mud ponds, it is estimated that up to 20% is lost due to mud crab that have escaped during the night. This problem also plugs the mud crab vertical hub, where some crabs can escape from their enclosure. Common escape points for the boxes include piping connection and other small openings. It is also common for some crab that pry open the box lid and escape the box itself. Crab that manage to escape from their enclosure often will end up dying due to the fall, cracking their shell while bleeding to death. While other that escape to the adjacent boxes are cannibalized by their neighbors. In addition, you should consider your working productivity. It is important as it will determine how efficiently you work, including cleaning and feeding the crab. How to ensure this is by stacking your vertical crab boxes suitable to the farm operator height. Higher stacking boxes will often have lower productivity due to the energy used to reach the higher boxes. Now, I will demo how to fit and clean different level of boxes. As you can see, our farm operator will easily fit and clean the crab house if it is at their range of height. However, when she tries to reach the upper boxes, she will need to lift their body a bit. This is not recommended as we cannot see the crab's condition. Now, we will show you a few designs of crab boxes that are available in the market. This is a smile box. The solid removal will be through valve control. Second, Aqua Planet box. This is the biggest box we have here. Here you can fit a bigger size crab. The solid removal will be through the outlet pipe. Like what we have shown before. This is the box we use here, Zonka High box. The material is hard but it cannot fit a bigger crab as the opening is not as big as the smile box and aqua planet. To summarize here, each box will have its pros and cons. It is also depends on what you want to achieve in your farm. Now, we are already at the end of this episode. To recap, Throughout this episode, we already know what are the important considerations to choose a perfect box for your farm. You should look at the size, durability, stability, solid removal, security and work productivity. In the next episode, we will share on the solid removal with a recirculating aquaculture system. Don't forget to subscribe to get notification on the next episode. If you have any question, you can drop it in the comment section. We will do a Q&A session at the end of the Mind Crab Show. Thank you for watching.